Hey, I'm Alex, and I am here with the uh, third column of my second booster box. Uh, probably the last one I'm going to open for a little bit, just because I'm super busy, and hopefully I can trade for a lot of what I need to build decks out of these cards. Alright, so this is like pack 27. Um, we have a Ceramic Blast, so it's a three, a two mana, a deal one damage to each mini here, they're disabled until your next turn. Um, so I like that the one damage can kill some kind of utility minions. Um, Feels like a card that's more likely to be good in limited than in constructed. Like that power level isn't that high. Um, yeah, I think I probably tend not to build decks with it. But interesting. Um, and the elite here is uh, Maddening Bells, which I've talked about in another uh, video. And then, uh, ooh, there's an elite foil in here. That's that's exciting. Uh, this is replication. Uh, so it says uh, it's two mana. Conjure a copy of an artifact carried by the caster. Uh, this card is very interesting. Um, you know the number of artifacts that are. You know, carryable and good right now. It's actually pretty high, right? Like the Philosopher's Stone, you can make a copy of it. Uh, any of the cores. So this can be a mana acceleration spell. Um, you know, also things like Crown of the Victor. Um, you know, you could conceivably give your caster like plus six power. Um, you know, plus three for each crown. And as more cards are printed, assuredly this card will have increased utility. So um, I think this is a like this is a fine card now. And as more cards are printed, uh, this card was going to get even better. So um, very excited to have that as a foil. Next pack. Elite card here is Infiltrate. Um, yeah, obviously four mana. In control of target I mean, minion until it deals damage and tap it and gain stealth. Uh, this card just seems kind of ridiculous to me. Um, you know, there's a bunch of cards for three mana that will just kill most creatures outright. Um, you know, for four mana, I guess you can destroy a lot of things in the same space. But um, if, you're, if your opponent plays minions at all, um, you know, kind of the minimum case is that you just gain control of it and it has stealth and then you never do anything so it deals damage so you just kind of hang on to it forever. But, um, you know, just the mechanics which are, it could also attack a site and even though it lose stealth, um, that's not dealing damage. So infiltrate could persist. Um, just feels like a little busted. Um, like I'm not sure if they you know, designed this card to be this way on purpose or not. Um, so it just seems like a very high power level. And um, obviously, like in fire decks, they could be playing like kind of fire, or fireball, or incinerate. So you know, there might be there might actually be better options, and maybe it's not super overpowered, but this seems really good to me. You know, like compared to the similar effects in Magic, this, that like steal a creature temporarily, this just seems more powerful and more flexible. Uh, all right. And then uh, this pack has uh, blessed us with another foil. This one is a uh, Wall of Fire. So, uh, you yeah, know, I think this is a card that is 
probably playable in some control strategies that use walls and sites to um, hem in minions. And, um, you know. Uh, I've never built that deck yet, but I bet it exists. Alright, next pack. Alright, I love this. It's a site called Maelstrom. It's a unique site. And uh, at the beginning of your turn, uh, you may pull each minion in this body of water one step. So it's just a recurring source of forced movement. Um, if you have a, uh, a shark in the water, it's probably <laughs> actually going to die, like, you know, attacking everything that's moving. But um, this just feels really strong in water decks where getting creatures you know, deeper into the water you know, usually spells their doom one way or another. Um, so, yeah, love, 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 love this card. Uh, anything else in this pack? Uh, nothing, nothing else special here, so moving on to the next pack. Um, okay, we got another site, um, elite site. This is the planar gate. So, uh, this is, um, Minions here can traverse the void, getting void walk until leaving it. So, um, you know, any minion, not an avatar, um, can step into the void and then they have void walk as long as they stay in the void. So, um, you know, really nice thematic, uh, you know, it's a planar gate into the void. And um, I think that this could be useful in aggressive decks. Like, um, you know, on turn two, or on turn, yeah, on turn two, you play your site, you know, this site kind of in front of you toward your opponent, and, you know, maybe your opponent tries to place their site to the left or right, and, um, I mean, I guess you can just place, like, your site in the next space and connect up. But maybe if you had something with like airborne and extra movement, like a cloud spirit, um, it could move through the void really fast. Maybe there's other things that have extra movement. I guess it doesn't have to be airborne. So maybe that's not it. But um, you know, units in the void are immune to damage. So maybe. Maybe it's better to like advance through the void than to play a site so that like if your opponent you know it's like playing a Nova or an Earthquake, like your guys can't be targeted. So yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's like good for swarms like advancing safely while they're in the void. Um yeah, I haven't thought a ton of this card, but it's it's kind of interesting and probably has some deck building applications. Uh, the rest of this pack looks pretty ordinary, so we'll just skip through it. Next pack. Alright. Most of the cards we've seen. And then the Elite is the Bottomless Pit, which I keep having all kinds of ideas about. How to force things into the bottomless pit. So uh, I guess now I can you know, build and test those decks in paper. Camera having a little trouble looking all the way down the bottomless pit. Figured that though. Okay. Uh, next pack. Uh, we have a Dwarven Forge as the elite card. So I think I've, I've talked a bit about Dwarven Forge. Uh, so I'll just move all these on. Make space for the next packs. Elite 
here is a mix air. I think this is my second mix air. And, um, you know, uh, I'm, I would like to have a play set of these so that if I want to play some hyper rampy deck that gets up to either fives real, real fast or eights on a pretty sharp timeline, uh, this is good for that. I think the, um, the air mixes might be the best for ramping just because the sites also uh, generate rapid mana and so yeah, it's a little easier to spike upward. Maybe like air and earth together might be the best combo for super ramp. Um, yeah. All right, next pack. All right, uh, the elite here is a Grand Master Wizard, which I think we've, we've talked about this. I think that, you know, certainly for things like Death Speaker, where you might get the Genesis more than once, this might be, you know, an always include, but I think for other decks, getting card draw engines that are less expensive so that by the time you're at six mana, you're casting real powerful things uh, seems better to me but uh, you know it's a solid card and I think the, the harder you're ramping the more important it is to get card draw so you know in that hyper rampy air earth deck like you know this is probably a, a solid um next pack we got another copy of screaming skull which I think we've talked about previously just keep moving, and the rest of these look ordinary. Um, so, yeah, I do like the camel. Um, I think the camels are kind of notorious for biting people. So, you know, two power, not entirely out of line, perhaps. Though also they're you know, really food motivated and can be very friendly when you're feeding them. So uh, another copy of uh, Vesuvius. I know there's this kind of ongoing theory that uh, doubles tend to run in boxes and uh, maybe that's kind of being borne out a little bit here. I think it's the second Vesuvius in this box. I don't know if that's like just probability for you and humans over capacity to pattern match but that is you know two of the same unique and what like is your expected value only like 13 uniques per box so a, a repeat has to be like pretty statistically improbable uh, next is uh, the Donnybrook Inn um, so this is uh, it's unique. Is it unique now? Yeah. yeah. It's anyone may cast minions here and then may do so for one less. So if you're playing uh, a deck that's ramping up to casting big creatures, this is like as good as it gets. This site is worth two mana for what you're trying to do, um, which is really busted in my opinion. Um, magic. Every time they've printed a land that makes more than one mana, um, people do degenerate things with it eventually. I uh, imagine for sorcery it'll be no different. Um, you know, there is the disadvantage on this that your opponent can use it too. And um, I think particularly if you're playing against an opponent who might have aggressive creatures, you know, be real careful about not playing this too early because every minion costs one less so cheap minions can get poured out real fast i guess conversely if you're trying to play some kind of like earth swarm deck um like wolves uh the inn is amazing right like for some reason the inn is just like wolves favorite place in the universe dump a whole hand of wolves real fast um so i think it's just like be conscientious about when you play this card and as long as you're careful about that, it can be very good. It's also, um, 
you know, it can be a trap. Like if, uh, let's say you're playing, you know, some kind of deck with, like, I don't want any kind of sweeper, fire, or earthquake. Um, you know, if you play this and your opponent's like, ah, I'll save a bunch of mana and dump out a bunch of guys, and you're like, well, thanks. I'm not going to kill everything in that spot. So um, I think this is, like, just an interesting card, and you have a lot of power um, based on when you choose to play it. And I should put this in my um, in some of my decks I'm playtesting with. I totally forgot it existed. So um, that's that's the end. Um, the rest of this pack looks ordinary. So we'll move on. Uh, this is gonna be my like fastest box opening video yet. I guess it's because I've seen them ton of the cards, but um, kind of having a race with myself to see how fast I can go. So this one uh, has uh, Roots of Yggdrasil as its unique. I think this card's very interesting. Um, you know, when it's destroyed, destroy everything. So if you have um, sinkholes, that's a way to trigger this. If you have like a crater eyes, it's a very expensive way to trigger this. Uh, scorched earth, I think, is maybe the cheapest way to, to trigger this. Um, and uh, oh yeah, I'm supposed to check on the rules with the candlemas druids, candlemas monks, to see if um, you know if that's a way of getting asymmetrical destruction with this. Um, but also, like, you know, outside of kind of abusing how this works, there's also just, um, you know, some avatars recover better, like the Pathfinder. Um, like, if both players have played out all their sites, a Pathfinder is much better off in terms of ability to rebuild their um, mana base after triggering this. Um, likewise, if a player has... Um, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a site where if someone else has more sites than you, uh, when you play this site, you draw three sites. So, you know, if you if you know you're going to play the Yggdrasil, you can kind of sandbag your resources or even, like, set up your hands so that you have more resources and, um, and then kind of, like, profit when you blow everything up. So, um, I expect people to, like, do some cool, cruel things with this. And then, um, you know, there's not that much that filters your site deck, but there is, you know, Crossroads, which will let you look at your top four sites. And if you, if you play like a couple Crossroads and a um, Mirror Realm to like maybe copy a Crossroads, uh, you can dig further into your um, site deck than you might expect. Uh, you know, I think that you, you need other things going on, like this isn't a standalone strategy, but, um, you know, it, it could be like a powerful synergy in a deck that has other cool synergies going on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so then, and I'll, I'll just mention, right, like it's, it's probably at its best in a Earth-based deck, because Earth has, um two different two mana uh, creatures that either place more sites in play or um, draw more sites. So, you know, just like maximizing the chance that Yggdrasil comes into play. And also like, you know, maximizing your ability to have resources in hand to rebuild with later. Uh, okay, so last back in this column, we have a Cloud City. And um, yeah, this card just is like generically good. You know, it makes air mana, um, and the ability to move around can just make life difficult uh, for an opponent. Like, if you have a avatar in Death's Door, moving on the Cloud City can sometimes like get you out of reach, or uh, you know, the Cloud City can move in such a way that it creates more space for you to place sites and takes away space from your opponent. 
um, it can like fly out of an annoying enchantment sometimes. So uh, yeah, just a nice card. And then you know thematically, like I think the art is great, and I just love the the castle uh, floating in the sky. Uh, so yeah, mix it into almost all of my air decks. And then the rest of these are ordinary. So that's it for um, you know, pack number 39 of box number two. And um, thanks for uh, joining me.